I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we tour some really unique homes from the bold and colorful to the serene. Designer Keisha Franklin shows us around her client's Harlem duplex. And we're inside this geometric ode to modernism in Stamford, Connecticut. We partner up with our friends at House Beautiful Magazine to tour this 1920s French revival in Los Angeles. Plus, how fashion informs interior design. We're at the West Hollywood home of Aaron Featherston. But first, the bold Brooklyn townhouse of design creative Ellen Van Dusen. I designed my home to be a reflection of my love and fascination of pattern and color. Welcome to Open House NYC. We have got a diverse array of design inspiration on both coasts today, spanning the serene to the surreal, so it's fitting that we're getting started in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn with designer Ellen Van Dusen. Ellen is the principal and founder of Dusen Dusen, a Brooklyn studio that celebrates bold color and pattern in both fashion and decor. Her townhouse was built in the late 1800s, and while she's preserved its ornate detail, she was playful with everything else, creating a bright modern home for her and her beloved pup that's truly filled with surprises everywhere you look. And yes, touch. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Ellen Van Dusen. I'm a designer and we're at my house in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. I have a line called Do's and Do's and I design my home to be a reflection of my love and fascination of pattern and color. Let's go take a look. This is a brownstone that was built in 1899. When I first saw the house, I was drawn to all the original kind of ornate details. It just had that classic brownstone feel. I wanted to preserve that, but still wanted to make it fresh and modern and fill it with all kinds of weird stuff. An example of that can be seen right here with the door. It's this like big classical design that I paired with these eyeball doorknobs that someone I follow on Instagram made. It sort of sets the tone for the design of the rest of the house. So the home opens up into this hanging out and dining area. Oh, and this is Snips the dog. She lives here too. So I wanted to get this kind of sectional sofa to kind of create a smaller room within this like grander space. I like to think of my couch as a pillow retrospective of my design career. I hate to see a TV while I am hanging out doing other stuff. So I asked a friend of mine if he could build a bookshelf that could hide my television. I came to this design. I love classic shapes and I think it kind of looks like a Lego. I would say the defining element of the room is this tulip that I got at an antiques warehouse upstate. It amazingly kind of matches everything that's in here. I love it. In between the living room and dining area, this is kind of the centerpiece of the room. I have my little collection of bread accessories over here. This croissant and this toast are made of real bread. They're hollowed out, encased in resin, and then a light is inserted inside. So they both light up. To complete this little area, my dog gets her throne. This is a dog bed that I designed. There's one in every room. The crown jewel of maybe my entire home is this incredible light fixture made by designer Katie Stout. She made this medallion that I feel like is a perfect transition from the ornate ceiling to the kind of wackiness of the light beneath it. I just couldn't be happier with how it came out. I designed this kitchen with my parents who are architects. They did most of the heavy lifting. I knew I wanted something fun and different and I usually have a tendency to go really crazy with color, but instead I decided to try to do something a little more subtle with pattern. I also knew I wanted a big island. Having a big space for everyone to congregate around makes for like a really nice atmosphere when we have people over. The fireplace is original to the house, but unlike the living room, it was not preserved as well. So I got all these broken tiles in different colors and made a pattern. I got this painting because I won it at an auction. I had no idea what was gonna come. All I knew was that it would be a portrait of my dog. And there's a QR code on it where when you scan it, it links to Snips' Instagram account 
which is at Snips World. Downstairs is my bedroom and workspace, and I wanted to introduce it with something kind of fun and poppy that you see both from the kitchen and from my bedroom. And there's one fun Easter egg, which is there's an outline of my dog's face at the top of the stairs. All the colors in the carpet reflect the colors in the stair rail, which is something I designed with my dad. From every different direction, the stair rail is a different combination of colors. It's a little surprise every time you walk past it. The bedroom is definitely a work in progress, but it's my own little sanctuary. The room is a little more muted, mostly because I haven't spent enough time on it yet, but my brother was getting rid of this like old Ikea set of drawers, so I painted this flower pattern on it, and now it's just a little bit cuter. And for my workspace, one of my favorite things is a rug that I have on the wall. It's a gigantic lion, what's not to love? The workspace has a bunch of different things I've designed for Deuce and Deuce in. It's a nice place for me to think about next moves. That's the grand tour. Thanks for visiting me and Snips at my wacky home full of color and pattern. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, rare is the home that celebrates comfort, style, Gilded Age detail, and bread. Up next, we are in West Hollywood at another fashion designer's home who's made the move into interiors. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're at the West Hollywood family home of Aaron Featherston. Aaron, perhaps best known as a fashion designer, has made a seamless transition from the wearable to the livable, proving that in fashion and interiors, good design should match your lifestyle. Check it out. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm a designer based here in Los Angeles, and this is my 1920s Tudor home in West Hollywood. I love the historical charm of our home. It was originally designed by famous architect Paul Williams in the 1920s. When we moved here, I wanted to bring my own special brand of organic modern to the home and to create a great indoor-outdoor flow. So as a designer, I always feel the living room is the place to make your statement. And I really wanted this room to be about bringing the outdoors in. The room has amazing natural light because it's surrounded by glass. We have a beautiful bay window and a pair of French doors that leads to our outside. With that in mind, I chose this really beautiful green velvet sectional. And I love it because it has a little bit of gold accents through the feet. And I think that that brings a nice little touch of glam in contrast to the more earthy wood tones that I have with a pair of stools here and the console table behind the sofa. Behind me is the playroom, which is probably my most favorite room in the house. It's super cozy and whimsical. I love the teepee and the little boy's chair there. And we spend a lot of time as a family together in that room. So my family loves to hang out together in the kitchen. We decided instead of doing a breakfast nook that made more sense for our family to do a seating area. Some might say a white sectional in a kitchen with two young children was a bold and daring choice, but I used a fabric called mud cloth, which is really durable. And I'm just so happy that it's white because it just adds to the overall light, bright, airy feel that I'm going for throughout the house. So I love having an all white bedroom. Because I'm a designer, I'm looking at pattern, texture, and color all day long. So when I go to sleep, I need to let my eyes rest. But the secret to doing an all white room is to bring in interest and depth through different textures. So I love this Moroccan inspired shag carpet on the floor. I brought in textures like this mud cloth against the percal sheets, linen on the Roman shades, and headboard. And then it's fun to bring in whimsical details. I love our little felt elephant and giraffe, and my son loves to jump on them when he comes in in the morning. And since this room is surrounded by windows and treetops, I feel like it's my little glam tree house. So speaking of trees, let's go outside.
So here we are in the outdoor space of our home. We always hang out here. This is where we do all our entertaining, have dinners, we have a barbecue, and of course we have our swimming pool, which we're so lucky. We always keep heated. It's a lovely saltwater pool. And this is just our place to hang out. I find the design process for doing interiors very similar to doing fashion. You have to start with a concept and then there's a whole creative process you have to go through to see it through to the end. But what I particularly love about interior design is that once you've created a space, it really gets to take on a life of its own. So thank you for coming to see my home and I'll see you soon. Coming up after the break, we are teaming up with House Beautiful Magazine to take a look at this fun, detail-filled abode. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now we are partnering up with House Beautiful Magazine in the West Adams neighborhood of Los Angeles. Senior editor Hadley Keller takes us inside the bright and festive home of designer Dee Murphy. Check it out. Hadley, how, how are, you? are you? Oh my gosh, what a beautiful space. Look at the light in here, it's amazing. Yes, the light is actually one of the first things that drew me to this house. So since we're here in your own home, can you tell me a little bit about your personal design style? I like to have fun when I design. That's great. I'm definitely not a minimalist. So you'll see a lot of layering, lots of texture. So tell me more about this beautiful living room. Absolutely, let's go sit down. This room is just so cozy, and I think that seems like it might be because you used a lot of vintage pieces, am I right? Yes, I love to use vintage in my design. Mm -hmm. I love how perfectly imperfect every piece is, yeah. and I think that when you are designing for a family, vintage pieces work great because if you have a spill or you see some patina, it's okay and it actually adds to the character of the home. When you have a vintage rug, putting a layer underneath adds a little extra warmth and a little bit more padding also because we have these hardwood floors that are old and creaky. Well, as much as I want to stay in this cozy room all day, should we go see the rest of the house? Absolutely. We've got such a great mix in here of vintage, modern, contemporary furniture. Yes. So anytime I design a room, it's all about really bringing in vintage, modern, and then a mix of materials. Right. You see the wood. Mm -hmm. I added the sheepskin rugs on top to so cozy, cozy things up. It's adding another texture. You have the marble. Mm -hmm. Then I always love to bring in some lucite, oh, just because it gives the eye a rest. OK, so we can see you have a great dining room here. Do you cook? Thank you. I make a mean breakfast and an awesome lunch. I will leave it at that. <laughs> That's good enough. Okay, let's see the go kitchen? Again. Yes, let's go. <laughs> I love what's happening on the ceiling here. I had originally wanted to put some wood beams up there, but okay. this ceiling is way too small for that. We decided to clad the ceiling with wood, and it was unconventional, but it, it warmed up the space immediately. Okay, so I love the kitchen, the dining room, the kind of public spaces. Can we see the bedrooms? Absolutely. Follow me. Wow, so what is this cool room? Okay, so we call this the bunk room. Of course. What I decided to do, because we needed an actual third bedroom, was to create what looked like an old-fashioned sleeper train. I love it. I love birds, I love plants, and I decided when I found this wallpaper that I really wanted to put it on the ceiling. And originally, it was not under here, uh -huh. but when I laid down to check it out, I felt like this person was missing no out. Yeah, yeah, they were totally missing out. So let that be a lesson. Always wallpaper the tops of your bunk beds equally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the kids' room? This is the kids' room, yep. Obviously, you've got two kids who are pretty young, but this yes. doesn't feel very juvenile or kind of cutesy. I think that we have moved away from that in design. I chose a wallpaper that was gray and white, and then I have accent colors kind of all over the room that speak to them. Yeah. These pieces are from the 60s. I've had them in here since they were babies. Each side is very personalized mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. who they are and what they love. Well, I'm jealous. I, for one, really want an elephant planter, and I definitely want a neon sign that says my name on it. 
Well, this is an unexpected bedroom color. Yes, it is. It was actually quite controversial with the <laughs> husband. It's actually very soothing mm -hmm. and it feels very much like a cocoon when you're in here. Yeah, and one of the things I think that's probably the most unconventional thing in here is you have this almost like a gallery wall of hats. Yes. So tell me about that. I wanted to figure out a way to put them somewhere but still see them because right. if they're gone inside a closet, you don't you know what yeah. you have. Yeah. So we found these great pegs so cool. that go into the wall and then you just hang them on and, and there you go. And it's kind of like right. an art piece. It is, yeah. it really is. Well Dee, thank you so much for showing me your home. It has so much personality, so much warmth. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Bye. Yeah. For more design inspiration, check out the latest issue of House Beautiful. Coming up in just a few, form meets function in Stamford, Connecticut. Welcome back. Now we're in Stamford, Connecticut at an impressive international style home with modern open interiors that are an art collector's dream. We join the owner who also happened to have designed it for a tour. Take a look. Hi, I'm Rena Pertuzzi. Welcome to my home here in Stamford, Connecticut. I designed every inch of this home to be both functional and exciting, and I can't wait to show you around. So come with me. As soon as I walked into this entry hall, I knew I wanted this to be my home. I knew this wall would be the perfect place to showcase art. But I really wanted to make a bold design statement here. So one of the things we did was paint a gray strip so that the artwork would pop. There's also a library off of the entrance hall that I designed to be unexpected and unpredictable. Two qualities that I love in a home. This is the space that really sold me on the house. We designed this space to be able to hold my collection of many items. We have slats with lucite shelves that can be moved around the metal that frames out the fireplace is a unique design element that wraps around to the other side and actually holds drawers. Every space opens up to this amazing yard. People that live in glass houses have to have something fabulous to look outside on, so we had to really do a great job in designing a space that could be as dynamic and interesting architecturally as what's going on inside. The outdoor space allows you to do a lot of great things, swim, sun, eat, read. There's even a meditation garden that's filled with flowers and a circular space that lets you ponder the universe and your place in it. In this outdoor space, we really tried to pay homage to the rectilinear lines of the house. So the privet hedge and the boxwood hedge are all very squared off, but it's very much like going to a high-end resort. You get into that pool and you grab a cocktail and you've escaped. Thanks so much for coming and seeing my home. It was truly a labor of love where I combined design, comfort, and art. And that's the definition of good living. Coming up just after the break, we join the designer of this refined yet welcoming Harlem duplex. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're with designer Keisha Franklin at her client's duplex in Harlem. Check it out. Hello, I'm Keisha Franklin, principal designer of Halden Interiors. Welcome to Harlem. My clients both have a very demanding work life. So the design goal for this project was to create a sophisticated retreat that made those long work days all worth it. And I can't wait to show you around. I really wanted to focus on texture in the living room. So I included grass cloth wall covering, cowhide accents in the stools and pillows, and this bamboo silk abstract rug. Adding an organic touch is one of my signature design styles. And so I created this walnut wood media cabinet and I mirrored it with the credenza in the dining room. I mimicked the seafoam green in the artwork in the dining room into the cabinets in the kitchen. In here, the mix of sophistication and organic elements definitely created an environment that's worth experiencing again and again. But I still have more to show you.
the lower level is all about lounging and entertaining. There's no better way to bring interest to a space than with strong contrast. And that's why I use this black and white color palette. In contrast to upstairs, I brought in a lot of brass accents to make it feel a little bit warmer. To continue with the textured elements, I brought in this beautiful fur throw, feathered juju hat, and the patchwork cowhide rug. What makes this a true Harlem gem has got to be this amazing outdoor oasis. The subtle grays and plum accents create a tranquil experience. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed the experience as much as I did creating it. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?